Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to Anderson High School. Not often that we're here for an afternoon game or on the weekend, but we are here for the final game of the Anderson Classic, at least for the Trojans. There will be one more after this. It'll be Rockwall and Westlake. But for now, we've got Goose Creek Memorial taking on your Anderson Trojans. And it should be a good one. Going to be a tough game for Anderson as they are entering tonight a little bit shorthanded. Nate Langley suffered an injury in uh, yesterday's game early in the first half. And I think if Langley plays against Rockwall, Anderson's playing here at 4 o'clock tonight. But that's basketball. Their injuries are, are part of the game. And just a few officiating breaks and a few uh, Langley offensive rebounds. And I think Anderson could have come out on top in that game. But instead, they'll just get the earlier slot against Goose Creek. It's going to be a very tough opponent for them. Langley, indeed, going to be out again today. It's a, an ankle injury for Nate. I believe he'll be held out against Westlake on Tuesday as well, so that's another, another tough loss for Anderson to not have their center for these games. But definitely a good idea to hold him out. I talked to Coach Pittsford before the game. He said Nate would probably have to miss uh, today's game no matter what. But if it were a, a big district game or a playoff game, Nate would be good to go for Tuesday. But since we're still in that non-district slate, we're going to go ahead and keep him out. So we'll go ahead and get a, a word on who the Trojans will have starting at the center position in just a moment. We imagine that they'll run with the same crew, although they might want to switch things up just uh, for some matchup purposes. It will be Wagner, Francis. Uh, Blackerby definitely starting. Uh, they may go Derek Armour for it. I know uh, Whit Whitlow should still be in the starting lineup, but otherwise not exactly sure who's going to get the nod here this afternoon. 2.30 is your uh, tip-off time, so we're going to get started a little bit late here, but not too bad. They've done a good job of keeping all these games moving smoothly throughout this tournament. But should be a fun one for Ladies Goose Creek Memorial. To the Darius Woodson and Sam Bradford going to be the two guys to look out for for the Patriots. Anderson wearing the home white, so they are officially the home team for this one. Darius, yes I really Woodson. He wears number four. Sam, my favorite referee at this tournament is Bradford. Number five. Darion, if you won't, I Williams. Number 10. Jordan, I got the booster by Johnson and Johnson. And number 12, rounding out the lineup. Brian, I like green eggs and Samuel. Y'all can laugh anytime you want. Now for the Trojan. He wears number one. Mitchell, guess who I came with, Lou? Number five, I've got to do it again. Jack, be nimble. Jack, be quick. Jack jumped over the candlestick. Francis. Bennett, I'm sorry, but all I got is Bennett back in Blackerby. Number 11, Mike, I couldn't come up with anything for you either, Wagner. But I got a good one on this one. He's starting number 22. Derek, I'm the best looking and the smartest of all the armor. Glory. Get what you pay for, ladies and gentlemen. Sit back and relax. We're going to have a good game. We've got three referees. You be the judge. You be the judge. Looks like we got some uh, some issues on this PA mic here. But no matter, we're ready to go. Trojans will, looks like they're going to use Francis on the jump ball. Usually Langley is the man to do it, but no Nate for today. Also no Ben Bazarian. He's missed this whole tournament. Haven't seen him on the bench, but he is here in the gym today, so good to have Ben back down there on the end of the bench. Key piece for Anderson moving forward. One of the key shooters off the bench for this Trojan team is this tip is won by Darius Woodson. But Anderson comes away with it. So here we go. Getting started with Mike Wagner working his way around the left side. He gets it outside to Francis. 
Wagner in the corner, faces up. Knocked away, but Francis gets it. Jack's going to go up, dump it off to Armour, and Armour's going to get the first basket Armour. of the game. Off the assist from Francis. Now there's Sam Bradford. He's their guy. Not much of an outside shooter, though. The other guy, number three, Darius Woodson, is an outside shooter. He's going to get a lot of three-pointers up today. Instead, they'll pass it off to Darian Williams. Now swing it over to Johnson. They're looking back up top, it's Bradford. We've got Whitlow isolated on him. Wagner almost comes away with a steal. Now going to try for three. That one's off. And as, as advertised, Bradford not knocking down his first three. Armour running the floor. Goes, uses the, the basket as, a, as an extra defender to avoid the blocked shot. And he gets it to go. Derek Armour starts with two, er, two baskets, four points. There's a three-pointer. No good. Too strong from Darius Woodson. So now Anderson coming out with the hot start after starting slow against Rockwall last night. They've got it four to nothing. Francis going to try from downtown. That's, That's good. A That's a Jack. good sign for Jack Francis, Francis, who struggled with his outside shot at times this season. Good to see him get one going. Seven nothing start for Anderson. Just 90 Seven seconds into the ball game, we already have a timeout for the Patriots. Timeout. Goose Creek coming into this one. They are two and one in this tournament, just like the Trojans. We are here playing for third place in the gold bracket. Classic. Their, uh, their route to this one was they played uh, two games on Thursday like Anderson. They beat St. Stevens in Austin School, then they took out Kingwood and uh, She's had fell the in the late game that was played right after Anderson's against Westlake. It was 58-48. to 48. So Goose Creek enters. Looking for third place, and so are the Trojans trying to get third place in their own classic. As off the timeout, Anderson gets a steal, and Blackerby passes that one too far ahead for Francis, and they'll have to come the other way. Kick it into the corner, now back outside. He's going to look at the three and then pull it back out. Anderson active hands early as Goose Creek already rocking with some substitutions. Here's Bradford coming around the pick. He's going to get to the basket, lays it up, and misses. Rebound underneath to Whitlow. The shortest guy there got it. Here's Wagner. Hesitation gets by his man, and that's blocked. That's a great block from Sam Bradford, who was able to recover and just use his length to block Wagner's layup. Wagner did a good job getting some separation, but when you have an athlete like that, it's tough. Wagner looking for the inbound, gets it to Blackerby in the corner. Bennett pump fake. And he's going to be stuck into the corner. They try to get it to Armour, and that's through his legs. Here come the Pats. Now swing it over to the wing. That's going to be a three for Samuels. He knocks it down. That's a three, Brian Samuels. So finally open up scoring. It's going to be Brian Samuels. It's a three-point basket. Now here's Wagner. Francis, they get it back to Mike. He's going to take the shot. He was knocked down. In the NBA, that's a foul. Pass inside, nearly blocking it as Francis, and they're going to get Jack on the foul. Some really soft contact at the rim results in a Goose Creek free throw. Looks like we're going to count the basket. Fouls on the Trojans, number 22, Armour, his bird. We're going to call it on Armour. I didn't see Derek in on the play. If anyone think it would be on Francis. But Anderson will, will take a foul on a, on a role player instead of their main guy. As that free throw is going to hit everything and not fall. As here's Blackerby going to try and push. Anderson has three on two. They swing it over to Jack on the wing. He's going to put it on the floor. Pulls up back to Blackerby. He's going to try a corner three. That's blocked. Ball goes underneath to Armour. Armour saves it. Gets it into Whitlow. Whitlow going to try and just do something with it. And he's fouled. That'll be free throws. Fouls on the shots. Gonna yeah, be on he was the all sorts of stuck four, underneath. Sam he couldn't Bradford quite make his way out of the lane. Would have been three seconds if he hadn't just gone up with it, and that's going to be a foul on Bradford. Anderson will take that. One team foul apiece. We're three minutes into the game, and Whitlow hits his first. Mitch drains the first shoots one more. Mitch had four in the game against Rockwall. He goes two for two. two. For two. Nine five. Sending traffic is Woodson. Now they kick it back around to Samuels, who has three. Back outside for Bradford. 
Good pass underneath. Swing it across and right into the hands of Wagner. They were looking for the three-pointer on the wing. Wagner, Wolf behind him, wasn't ready for it. And here we go on the other end. Here's Woodson. Stuffs it home. Happy Thanksgiving. There is Woodson. Back just a two-point game. Blackerby has it. They've got numbers in the front court. Dishes it off to Armour, and that's knocked out of bounds by Bradford, so it'll stay here. Come on, Trojan. Trojan. Wagner looking to get it into the cutting Whitlow. Wasn't there. Now they'll just have to get it back outside. Blackerby saves it to Francis. Wagner put a little too much on that one. Jack stuck in the corner. Now back out to Blackerby. Swings it across for Wagner. He's open. Instead, Armour's open in the corner. That's no good. Rebound batted for, and it looks like Goose Creek's going to come up with it. Here they come the other direction. Good pass, and he misses the dunk. So Anderson will take it. Blown opportunity at the rim, and Wagner's coming the other way. Back outside Whitlow, and that's poked away. Good job from Woodson. Active hands. Swing to the corner. Woodson is chased off the line. Instead, it'll be Samuels for three. That's no good. He can't make it two for two. And a 30-second timeout for Coach Pittsburgh. Big cheers from the Coos Creek sideline, although it's timeout not four, really Trojan that kind of timeout. timeout. Just a 30-second timeout. Trojan still with the lead and the ball. 3.50 to go here in the first quarter. A couple of shout-outs. Saw a friend of mine on the way in. As you all expected, Mr. Jeff Ruben through the first Williams break, Derek Armour is leading all scorers, friend, four points. To see you guys. Francis and Samuels also. both have three, and then Mitchell Whitlow uh, has two, and Jordan Good Johnson and Darius Woodson both have two for the Patriots. First buzzer sounds getting them out of the timeout. See what Anderson does. Coming with it out of their own timeout, having to play shorthanded today. Anderson doesn't run a very deep rotation as it is, and they're without two of their guys that they've been running with. Starting center and uh, usually seventh or eighth man, Ben Bazarian. But we've gotten some, uh, some great minutes from these football players for Anderson. Colin Page and Fred Dale both giving Anderson some really good minutes in this tournament. Is Francis going to try again from three, and Wedgie. Everyone look, it's a Wedgie. Yay. Bradford for the Pats. Moving his way around. Armour doing a good job just keeping his hands straight up. Bradford lucky. No foul was called for an over the back. Armour able to clear it away. And Blackaby up ahead to Francis. Jack jab step. Ooh, hesitated on shooting that three. Back to him in the corner. That one's knocked into the air. Francis can't come up with it. And the other way is Goose Creek. Wagner getting a block on a much taller player. He gets it back. And Wagner with his hands up. They're still going to call the foul. Foul's on the shot. It's going to be on the Trojans. Number one, Mitchell Whitlow, his first team. They'll get Whitlow on the reach in. So Woodson to the line Anderson the avoiding shot. getting foul trouble on their big starters here. But it's Woodson to the line. He makes his first. Woodson good on the first. Shoots one more. Scoring is kind of stagnated here. Neither team able to get much. But still three minutes left here in the first quarter as we need a new ball. So he's one for one at the line now. Going to try and make it two for two to give the Patriots a tie. Two for two. So we're up at nine apiece. Get it into Francis. Full court press from Goose Creek Memorial. Now here's Whitlow with a three on two. Fred Dale into the game open in the corner. He leaves it short. Bradford loses it, gets it back. Now coming the other way. Good pass off and out running our Patriots. Francis, skip. Now back to him. They get it across for Whitlow. It's into the hands of Blackerby. Bennett loses it. Anderson sloppy with the ball once again to start a game. The Patriots have their first lead of the game. Team from Baytown. 
So here's Blackerby crossing over, working his way inside. It's poked away. He just has to throw it up. That's no good. Blackerby gets his own board, and it's back outside to Wagner. He's going to dribble in and just reset. 2.11 to go in the, half, or in the quarter. Screen from Dale. They get it to him on the roll, and he's blocked. Swatted underneath by Jordan Johnson, and they're going to get Fred for a foul. Foul on transition is going to be on the Trojans, number 35. Fred Chibi Dale, his first team. Third. Third team foul for Anderson so far. 2.02 to go in the first. Avant Coleman into the game now. He's there on the inbound. Also in is Diamond Maloney. Now Coleman skips it, tries to get it underneath, and that's knocked out of bounds by Dale. So it'll stay underneath, but a good job to force him. Looking for the inbound. They get it in. Willow knocks it out of bounds. That'll stay here, but once again, just a good job getting a deflection. They were trying to get it to Woodson. He didn't have the position. So now they'll switch blocks and inbound it again. Coleman will be the one to do it. They're looking, and they just get it outside to Sam Bradford. Bradford spinning on Blackerby, kicks it to the corner, and a short corner jumper is no good, but getting his own rebound and losing it out of bounds is Samuels. Here's Francis. 90 seconds left. Jack over to Whitlow. Now Wagner. Wagner working his way, navigating, and he turns it over. And that's thrown out of bounds off of him. So the Goose Creek defense, too much for the Trojans to handle right now. But Anderson's doing an all right job holding their own against Goose Creek. We've got a bit of an offensive stalemate. So let's see what Bradford can do. He's their big guy that has yet to score here tonight. Because he is Wagner. He gets away with a push off. As Bradford able to get the rebound back, he's going to go right at Mike. And that's going to call an offensive foul. And that's two on Bradford. Offensive foul on the Patriots, number four. Sam Bradford, his second personal team, second. They're going to get Campbell Duncan in. They're going to give Whitlow his first rest. Duncan, the sophomore. Second man off the bench in this one. Anderson able to get it in. Wagner just have to lift it ahead, and they're going to call a double dribble. Looked like Wagner didn't have it, but... Anderson, point guard, struggling with some TOs. Usually Mike is pretty sure-handed with the ball. But his fourth game in three days has got him a little bit tired or something. Here's Coleman. Swings it back outside. It's Zavon Spencer. Spencer back to Coleman into the corner and open three for Woodson. He finally gets one to go. Three, Woodson. Five-point deficit for Anderson. 30 seconds to go. Francis going to pull it back. Back outside for Wagner. It doesn't look like Goose Creek's going to be too inclined to let him. But they get it back to Jack. Jack working his way around, 10 seconds now, so they will hold for the final shot. They're telling, uh, Coach Pitts, we're telling everyone to let Jack just isolate. They kick it to the corner for Duncan. His three-pointer's no good. Rebound goes underneath to Goose Creek, and they won't get it off. First quarter. Good job, Wagner, at least cutting off an attempt there. But that'll be how the first quarter ends. 14-9, Goose Creek, Anderson struggling on offense. They started out on a 7-0 run since a 14-2 run for the Patriots. Going to go ahead and take our quick first break on the broadcast. I'd like to thank you for tuning in all weekend for the Anderson Classic. We've got more coming up for you in just a moment. Bike Live, formerly KMAC Sports, one of the largest broadcast networks in Texas and the nation. Check us out at BikeBYPE.com. Bike is the leader in high school sports broadcast. We've been doing it for 15 years. 3-13, not yet another verse. Breaking tackles, dives to the end zone. Touchdown, Rangers. 
16 seconds. Really close up the corner. Rotates to Wilson. She fires the three. Oh my god, it went in! Cavaliers pull ahead by one! Bravo to Vipe, V-Y-P-E dot com. Coming back out of the timeout, want to thank our sponsors That's on today's deal. broadcast for Trojan basketball. Your sponsors are Harry Breen and Herman as well as Enco Tech. And for us here at Vibe, it's Academy Sports and Outdoors. Get ready to go back to school and back to sport at Academy Sports and Outdoors. Shop in-store or online at academy.com, and you can find all the hottest sports gear and casual styles from Nike, Adidas, Under Armour, and more. So it'll be Anderson basketball to start Q2. They trail by five. It's Campbell Duncan with the ball. Now Francis back with it outside. Jack working around the perimeter. Gets it into Page, who's been excellent in this tournament. Now Jack trapped in the corner. Stifling defense from Goose Creek right now. They get it inside to Duncan. Duncan now stuck with it, and he just dribbles it out of bounds. Avoid those corners and baselines, especially if a team's trapping like Goose Creek is right now. Here's Coleman. Spencer on the wing. Now he gets it in to Woodson, and they're going to call a foul. That's on the floor. Going to be on the Trojans. Over 33, Colin Page. We're going to get Colin Thursday. Page for that one. Four. Fourth team foul for Anderson, so they've got two left. This here's Spencer going to be the one to inbound it. He gets it up top to Coleman. Coleman working on Wagner. Crosses over, shifts Mike a little bit. He's going to pull up from the elbow. That's no good. Rebound up high for Armour. Now here comes Wagner, and they're going to get a foul on Spencer with the bump. That was on the Patriots, number 15, Zavon Spencer. His first team, third. First foul of the game on him. Whitlow's going to come back in for Duncan. Wagner gets it to Francis, and that's poked out of bounds by Avant. Wagner gets it to Francis. Francis working to the left. He's going to hand it off to Page. Fading to the corner is Francis now. Wagner comes back outside to get it, and Wagner's going to attack the paint. Hop step, gets it to Whitlow. Whitlow into the air, into the corner for Page. His three-pointer is no good. Rebound. Goes to Woodson, and they're going to get Anderson on a foul on another loose ball. Number one, Mitchell Whitlow, his second personal 15 foul. They're calling some soft, soft contact in this game. Skips it across. Here's Kadrian Joseph into the game for the first time. Now posting up is Woodson. He's going to step back for three. That's no good. Rebound knocked away by Whitlow, but taken away ultimately by Maloney. Maloney now getting it over to Coleman. Coleman into the lane. Goes right at Armour. Going to take it up. No good. Page goes up and steals it away. And Anderson will come back with it. Wagner dribbling in. He's stuck there at the high post. Now Francis. Jack in the same position. Because Anderson really can't find much when they're trying to penetrate. There's Whitlow, looks at a three. He's going to take a few dribbles inside. Back out to Wagner. He has a lane. Tried to rifle it into Armour, and that's another Trojan turnover. Now here they come the other way for Woodson. Woodson lay up and in. Woodson, your road. Really not a lot of scoring here. It's just 9-16. to 16. They get it over to Page. And hey, another wedgie. As Anderson, in the last, well, eight minutes or so, uh, nine minutes, they have only scored two points. Anderson came out with a 7 to nothing run in the first 90 seconds of the game, only one basket since. So here's Coleman working his way around. They're going to kick it up to Walker now. Onto the left wing, that's Johnson. Johnson has two points in the game. And now back upside to Joseph. Now here comes Maloney driving into the lane. He goes up with They're going to call another travel. (laughs) 
So now 5.18 left. France is going to get his first rest of the game. Blacker be in now. Kick ahead to Whitlow. These are good opportunities for Anderson as Whitlow misses the runner as they're getting some three-on-two opportunities. They just can't score right now. Now into the lane, going up with it. Bumping off everybody is Coleman. Anderson now down by nine as Whitlow has it taken away. Coleman up in the air. Blackerby takes it. Now down to the floor, and Whitlow has it. Knocked around again. Armor to Wagner. Anderson going to call a timeout. So rough going here in the second quarter. We're halfway through it. Anderson trailing by nine. Just a 30-second timeout, so we'll keep it here. Just having trouble doing anything against this Goose Creek defense right now. Can't penetrate, and the shots aren't falling. And if you can't penetrate and you can't shoot, then what can you do? Another shout out. I want to say hello to good. So coming out of the timeout, it will be Anderson Ball. Derek Armour still with the team high of four. Francis with three, Whitlow with two. Say hello to one of my favorites too. Good golly, Miss Molly. Thanks for coming today. Four, four, four. Left in the half. They'll run with the same crew. It'll be Whitlow, Blackerby, Wagner, Page, and Armour. Looking in for Blackerby. They get it into Bennett. Bennett's going to go cross court for Wagner. Back across to Bennett. Now here's Whitlow, man behind him. Whitlow going to go Euro step to the basket, and it's blocked away. See, I mean, they're getting, they're getting opportunities. Whitlow's just got to make better decisions with it once he gets to the basket. I mean, he has guys open in the corners. And they are collapsing on him quickly underneath. Here's Wagner. Gets it into Armour. Armour just pulls it out to the side. Now Blackerby just going to pull and take it. He got it. A much-needed basket for the Trojans there. As they are into double figures and down by just six. Driving in. Flicking it up is no good. Armour goes up to grab it. He almost has it taken away, and he just throws it out of bounds. So another unforced error by Anderson. This group, Goose Creek won't let them have anything. Was Bradford going to come in with the two fouls? He has zero points. Here's Samuels. Now Coleman. We'll get it back out to Walker. Now into the corner. Back outside, driving in. Blackerby goes up, straight up. And Blackerby goes down. Anderson, comedy of errors here in his first half. They're down by six. Wagner's just going to pull it and reset. Swing it over to Whitlow. Now Mitchell going to give it back to PG. Wagner, back to Mitchell. Mike setting a screen up top. Page coming off the screen, going to take the three. That rims out, but Blackerby's the only one underneath, and they're going to call a foul on Coleman. On the rebound. That'll be four team Page fouls against Goose Creek. Anderson one. has five. Foul's going to go. That's the first on Coleman. So 18-12. Armor back in. Got some subs here for Goose Creek. They'll put Woodson back onto the court. He's out there with Williams and Bradford. The other two starters in are Johnson and Samuels. Wagner gets it into Page. Page pumping off Woodson and getting it to go. Colin Page. He plays football. He plays basketball like a football player, and that's what Anderson needs right now. Bradford got away with a little push on Page as they're going to call a foul on the rebound. Foul's on the rebound. Going to be on the Trojans. Number 10, Bennett Blackerby. His first team, sixth. So here's Samuels. Ready to inbound it. They lead by four. Bradford with it up top. 3-11 to go left in the half. Bradford still scoreless. I feel like he's looking to get his first basket here. Good try to get it inside, but Blackerby is there to pick it off. And now Anderson coming with a chance to try and cut it to just a one-possession game, and they're going to be called for a foul. Samuels getting a little too handsy. And when you press, 
his first team. As aggressively as Goose, Goose Creek does, eventually fouls will start to pile up on you because you're trying to steal the ball every single time up and down the court. You get a little handsy, you get a little fouly. Blackerby, hand off to Wagner. Now back outside for Bennett. He's going to have another open look at a three. That's too strong, but it falls in. Soft touch off the back rim is Bennett Blackerby. Second triple of the game. Trojans are down just one. Now here's Samuels back outside. Woodson, chase him off the three-point line. Goes up strong. Can't get it to go. Blackerby goes up and snags it. So with Francis on the bench, Anderson coming back into this one. As Wagner's going to go full court. Zips it into the corner. What a find to Armour, and that's blocked. Getting a hand on it was Johnson. They fly. These closeouts for Goose Creek are insane. This here's Bradford working on Page. Floater is no good. He's still scoreless. Rebound goes to Mike. For a guard, Mike has a lot of rebounding ability. He has a nose for the ball. Here's Blackerby. The hot hand shooting right now for Anderson. He's got a team high six as he is kind of become the leading scorer for this Anderson team this year. As Blackerby steps back, Whitlow drives in, offhand, no good. Blackerby tried to get the steal. Here's Bradford, going to try and bump off Wagner, misses it underneath. Here's Williams with the rebound, and they'll pull it back and reset. A minute and a half to go in the half. So Woodson with nine in the ball. He hands it back to his point guard, Williams. Now onto the left wing is Samuels. Samuels working his way in, spins, goes up with it, and that's going to be another travel. They High school refs hate spin moves. I, I, I feel like that is as where the high school refs struggle the most is, is on any spin. As I, I've seen very few spin moves uh, into the post where, where a travel is not called. It's just a, it's a tough footwork move to handle, and I think... High school students and high school players and officials sometimes get that gather step mixed with the third step, mixed with maybe a fourth step. So it's just a tough one to handle as Blackerby's going to fire. Bank is closed on a Saturday afternoon. Now here's Bradford. Francis back into the game defending him. 55 seconds to go. Bradford going to make his way in right at Page. Almost another turnover. Then they'll pull it back out. A wide open three for Woodson. That's good. It's a three, Darius Woodson. So Anderson with it. 35 seconds left. Have a good opportunity to hold for the final shot here in an old school 35 second college possession. Blackerby with it. Putting it on the floor to reset the timer. They kick it across to Mike. Francis over there in the right corner. On the opposite side of the court. Wagner crosses over. Gets it back to Jack. 15 seconds left. Defending Jack is Samuels. Brian has five points. Francis spins away. Kicks it across Blackerby, and that's taken away by Bradford. This could be a good opportunity to get his first point. Gets it, and he gets the basket at the other end. And that's how the half ends. That's it. So a six-point deficit for Anderson at the end of the first half off the turnover. Sam Bradford with his first basket after a pretty bad first half from him. Darius Woodson carrying, though, for Goose Creek. He's got 12. For Anderson, Blackerby has six, and Armour has four. Francis with just three. Whitlow and Page each have a two, uh, two points apiece. So we've got ten minutes on the board for halftime. Going to go ahead and take a break here. I'd like to thank all of you for tuning in on the broadcast this afternoon for some Trojan basketball. We've got the end of the Anderson Classic here, both teams in the championship game in uh, warming up now. So if Anderson wins here, they will have third place in the Anderson Classic. If they lose, they will be uh, the loser of the gold bracket, but that's still fourth place overall. Not at all bad to finish fourth in a tournament. Got the stats read out for you. I'd like to thank our sponsors on tonight's broadcast, or this afternoon's broadcast, only 3.06. A nice early game for the Trojans. For the Anderson Classic, your sponsors are Howry Breen and Herman for Trojan Basketball, Encotech, and for us here at Vibe, the fine folks at Academy Sports and Outdoors. At Academy Sports and Outdoors, back to school also means back to sport. And from graphic tees to football cleats, we have everything you need to make this your best year yet. 
swing by your local Academy store today or shop online at academy.com and you can find all the hottest styles from top brands like Nike, Adidas, Under Armour, and Vans all at a price you'll love. So if you want game-changing gear, start here at Academy Sports and Outdoors. We've got eight and a half minutes of halftime. We'll be right back with a minute or two talk through this game and see what the Trojans need to do to improve on if they want to get a victory here and finish with a bronze medal in the Anderson Classic. Jack Francis had three. Derek Armour had four. Bite Live, formerly KMAX Sports, one of the largest broadcast networks in Texas and the nation. Check us out at BiteBYPE.com. Bite is the leader in high school sports broadcasts. We've been doing it for 15 years. 3 13, not yet another reverse. Breaking tackles, dives to the end zone. Touchdown, Rangers. 16 seconds, really close up the corner. What page to Wilson? She fires the three. Oh my God, it went in! Cavaliers pull a hit by one. Log on to BiteBYPE.com. Vibe Live, the leader in high school sports broadcasts. Wait, hold on just a moment. It's true that Vibe Live, formerly KMAX Sports, excels at high school sports broadcasts, but did you know that Vibe Live does more than sports? Vibe Live does band recitals, academic events. For more information on how Vibe Live can broadcast your event, email us at vibevype.com. Interested in Vibe Campus? Vibe Campus brings our popular citywide media days right to your doorstep. As a Vibe Campus client, we will work with you to help you take advantage of our unique campus model to build a unique experience for your school. From media day photo shoots of all your athletes to game day coverage, broadcasts and live streams, video and digital content, hype videos, the Vibe U program, same day graphics, and of course your very own campus magazine, Vite Campus is truly whatever you want it to be. Email info at vitemedia.com to find out how to join Vite Campus today. For high school sports coverage second to none, discriminating sports fans, booster clubs, and student bodies will tell you, Vipe stands above the rest. Vipe can provide your school and your entire school district with complete digital video streaming and live broadcast coverage at prices that fit your budget. Find out more information at Vipe, VYPE.com. VYPE.com. Hey high schoolers, are you interested in a career in sports media? Vibe can help. Launched in 2017, our Vibe U Ambassador Program is a one-of-a-kind educational scholarship program that offers high school students a chance to gain hands-on experience in the sports media field. Vibe U also gives students a platform to build their portfolio of creative work under the guidance of Vibe's seasoned professionals. From covering games to publishing photos, writing articles, and conducting on-camera interviews, each Vibe U ambassador receives an immersive experience geared toward their interests while promoting their own school and preparing them for their future. Email info at vitemedia.com to find out more about Vibe U today. For high school sports coverage second to none, discriminating sports fans, booster clubs, and student bodies will tell you, Vibe stands above the rest. Vibe can provide your school and your entire school district with complete digital video streaming and live broadcast coverage at prices that fit your budget. Find out more information at Vibe, VYPE.com. VYPE.com. What is Vipe Live? Vipe Live is one of the largest and most respected broadcast and live stream networks in the state of Texas. Vipe Live broadcasts any sport you can think of for youngsters of any age, from Pee Wee and Pop Warner to high school, club, college, semi-pro, and beyond. We also broadcast plenty of academic, fine arts, and community-related events as well, and now as partners with Flow Sports. Email us at info at vipemedia.com to find out more. Vipe Live, we bring your teams to you. Hey buddy, you say you wish someone was covering your favorite high school sports teams? 
you just couldn't make it to the game and you need to find out now what's going on? Well, my friend, your prayers are answered. Go to Vibe, B-Y-P-E dot com and hit Find Your School to see what Vibe is saying about your great community. See for yourself why Vibe is the leader in high school sports coverage in Texas. Check us out at Vibe, B-Y-P-E dot com. For high school sports coverage second to none, discriminating sports fans, booster clubs, and student bodies will tell you, Vibe stands above the rest. Vibe can provide your school and your entire school district with complete digital video streaming and live broadcast coverage at prices that fit your budget. Find out more information at Vibe, V-Y-P-E dot com. V-Y-P-E dot com. What is Vipe Live? Vipe Live is one of the largest and most respected broadcast and live stream networks in the state of Texas. Vipe Live broadcasts any sport you can think of for youngsters of any age, from Pee Wee and Pop Warner to high school, club, college, semi-pro, and beyond. We also broadcast plenty of academic, fine arts, and community-related events as well, and now as partners with Flow Sports. Email us at info at vipemedia.com to find out more. Vipe Live, we bring your teams to you. Hey, buddy, you say you wish someone was covering your favorite high school sports teams? You just couldn't make it to the game and you need to find out now what's going on? Well, my friend, your prayers are answered. Go to Vibe, B-Y-P-E dot com and hit Find Your School to see what Vibe is saying about your great community. See for yourself why Vibe is the leader in high school sports coverage in Texas. Check us out at Vibe, B-Y-P-E dot com. Back in at halftime, got a minute and a half before we get back going. Trojans back out onto the court, getting some shots up. They trail by six. And right now, uh, all I would say is stop turning the ball over. This uh, Goose Creek defense has been stifling. They uh, have been swarming to every loose ball, every pass. They're trying to jump into the lane and get a deflection, and Anderson has not done a good job responding. They're trying to force too many passes into tight windows. And Goose Creek just has the athletes and the length to to kind of negate a lot of what Anderson tries to do. Uh, Anderson without Langley, he is a, a huge key for this Anderson team just as far as what he does defensively. And uh, on the offensive glass, he's a good finisher around the rim. Can never count uh, any Anderson possession out when Langley's under the basket. And they are missing him dearly right now. But they trail by six. So Baylor winning the Big 12 championship. Got to give that a resounding ugh. And then Georgia Bama going to go home and watch that. It's been, a, it's been a tough time to be a, a Texas student. Sports not doing so hot. Basketball team is pretty good. I, uh, as a Rockets fan and a Texans fan and an Astros fan and a Longhorns fan, this has been a rough fall. So Anderson being such a good team and winning so many games really does help me out. I cannot stress that enough. But Anderson will come out with the ball to start the half. It'll be the starting five that they ran with at the beginning of the game. Here's Blackerby attacking the paint. Gets to the basket. Misses. Armour nearly had it. He's been pretty good. Uh, getting some of those loose rebounds, batting it around, trying to keep possessions alive for Anderson. But here's Bradford. He's got two. It's been a slow start for him. See if he can get going for Goose Creek here in the second half. It'll be a big part of this offense. It's here Samuels over there on the wing. Got up into the air and throws it right to Jack. Francis, two on three. He'll just pull up in the lane. That's going to be no good. Right into the hands of Goose Creek. Anderson, no numbers on that possession. They still tried to force it. 7.15 to go here in the third quarter. We are scoreless. And with it on the wing is Woodson. He's going to try for three. That's going to be off the backboard no good. Blackerby doing a good job of finding that one and 
taking it away. Francis knocked to the floor, so he'll be late getting back into this possession as Blackerby going to step back for three. That's blocked. That's another blocked three-point attempt as Blackerby just going to try and take it right away. He does. And are they going to call a foul? It looked like it had to be a jump ball. They call Johnson. I assume that would be, a, if anything, a jump ball or a foul on Blackerby, but some, somehow Bennett gets free throws out of this. Certainly take that if you're wearing blue here. In the interest of being fair. Is that one, unlike his second three-pointer of the game, hit everything and misses. Wagner back getting some advice from his coach. As Bennett goes one for two, not, not going to miss both often. So Anderson's got it back down to a five-point game. With Bradford with it up top. Francis dropped back on him. He's not much of a shooting threat, but he will take him if you leave him open enough. He's taken one today as they've got it into the real three-point threat and post it up. Woodson already knocked down a few here this afternoon. They find it to Francis. Jack's wide open from downtown and still going to take it in. Good hesitation dribble to freeze the defender and get the layup. Now pushing pace are the Patriots. Here's Bradford. He gets underneath, and Blackerby's there to take it away, but Blackerby had his feet uh, on the baseline when he poked that away, so that's going to be out of bounds, and that will stay down here. So 23-20, to 20, Goose Creek Memorial with the ball, ready to inbound it. It's going to be Brian Samuels to try and get the pass in, and he does all the way back out to Bradford. Bradford lets it go, and he'll get in the backcourt. Of course, off an inbound, you can go into the backcourt. Six minutes. Two minutes gone in the third. Bradford attacking the paint, flicks it up and gets it to go. It's not a very pretty style of play, but it's all brute force and it works. Here's Whitlow into the air, it's turning, spinning back out to Blackerby. He's going to attack the closeout. Bennett lost it going up. Tried to go up with it, slipped out of his hands, and he tosses it to the wall. It'll be Patriot basketball. They're up five. So Bradford matching his total from the first half already with that basket on the last possession. Here's Bradford setting a screen on Francis, getting downhill, dumps it underneath, and that's a good job. He commands so much attention on these drives. He's just able to find an open man underneath the basket right there in the dunker spot. Here's Wagner attacking, gets it to Armour. Armour going to go up, can't finish over Woodson, but he bats it out to Whitlow. Blackerby now fading. He's got it. He's going to drive, go up, up and under. He can't get it, and that's going to be another foul on Bradford. I'm going to say Bradford bumped him to the baseline, and that's going to be three on Sam Bradford. Usually have bad luck with athletes named Sam Bradford personally, but. Was that too old? I mean, adults will, will, will remember Sam Bradford at Oklahoma, but. That was like eight when he was there. It was eight when he won a Heisman. Or, sorry, correction. I was eight when he shouldn't have won that Heisman. Still bitter about that. I'm not, but it's fine. Bennett makes it two for two at the line. He's got a team high nine points for Anderson. He's three for four from the foul line, and he's knocked down a couple triples. So a five-point game. They fired underneath and fell asleep on Woodson again. That's an easy basket for Darius Woodson, and Anderson's letting one guy beat him again. Wagner trailing by seven. He drives in, gets to the basket, and that's blocked away by Woodson. Woodson tries to save it. He does, but Anderson players are there to get it. Three Trojans were in the vicinity, but here's Francis driving around, kicking it into the corner. A wide open three-point attempt for Blackerby, and he gets it to go. Bennett Blackerby is starting to heat up. He's up to 12 points. Timeout on the floor. So now down to a four-point game off the three. If you're trading twos and threes, Anderson needs more stops than that. But we have a full timeout on the court. Going to go ahead and take our first break of the half. I'd like to thank you for tuning in to the broadcast tonight. We've got more Anderson hoops for you right after this. Fight Live, formerly KMAX Sports, one of the largest broadcast networks in Texas and the nation. Check us out at FightVYPE.com. Fight is the leader in high school sports broadcast. We've been doing it for 15 years. 3-13, not yet another reverse. Breaking tackles, dives to the end zone. Touchdown, Rangers. 
16 seconds. Really close up the corner. Rotates to Wilson. She fires the three. Oh my god, it went in! Cavaliers pull ahead by one! Log on to Vipe, V-Y-P-E dot com. Back out of the timeout. Anderson with just two timeouts remaining. They're doing a good job staying with it here in this second half. Much better on the offensive side of things, getting some open looks. Bennett Blackerby's knocked down his open shots oh, when yeah. he's gotten them. We had a Reese McMillan sighting, the Reese McMillan. Thanks for coming. This is the 23rd game in the Anderson Classic this, uh, this season. The final game will be played at 4 p.m., or rather whenever this one ends, against Rockwall and Westlake. We won't have that broadcast for you, but you should come on down and try and check out that game. That should be a good opportunity to check out Westlake. I think we're all rooting for the Austin team. Can't have a Dallas area school come in and win the Anderson Classic. That'd be unacceptable. But here's Bradford with Page on him. Bradford loses it. Francis gambled on it. Instead, it'll be a three for Woodson, and he connects. Woodson downtown. He's the only one doing it for Goose Creek. He's got 19. The next closest is five. Blackerby in it for Jack. Jack going to get an opportunity to shoot it from the corner. A lot of contact on that. No foul called. Page doing a good job of collecting it. Avoids the foul on Bradford, and that's going to be a foul underneath. I think they, they called it on Woodson, but I think the foul should have been called on Bradford before the play. It looked like Woodson had his hands straight up but Bradford was the one bumping Page before he got to the basket, so I think this should really be a foul on the floor against Bradford. But Anderson will take the free throws. Colin Page, already with two points in this one, leaves it short. Page gets it. So he goes one for two at the line. Fred Dale into the game. Trap at half court. Got to not let Woodson get open for three. Now into the corner. That's an open shot attempt for Coleman. High arcer is no good. Blackerby up there to get it. And Bennett kicks it back to his point guard, and Anderson comes the other way. It's a six-point game. And Wagner, that's another time today that they've fallen asleep on it, but Francis gets it back and lays it in. Wagner uh, has gotten caught on that wolf a few times. Francis nearly gets the steal. Hey, buddy. Back into the game as we have a three on the other end, and that's going to be way off. Rebound underneath, and they're going to get Paige for a foul. That's just Anderson's first, so that's fine. But when uh, when you're playing basketball and someone's calling wolf, 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 that means someone's coming up behind you, and Wagner's gotten pickpocketed from behind a couple times today as they'll just pass it back outside for Woodson, who's going to get another open three. Finally misses one this half, but Anderson falls asleep on the glass, and it's an easy layup. Darion Williams, Darion Williams with his first make of the game. And Anderson nearly falling victim to the trap. Francis almost saving that one to avoid the open look on the other end. But here comes Page spinning, getting to the basket, and blocked from behind by Bradford. A pass ahead to Bradford. Bradford going to try and take it all the way himself, but Wagner's there to knock it away. Mike Wagner, active hands. All the way, gets it to go. The scoop layup behind his head with some beautiful spin on it gets Mike Wagner his first layup of the game. Now another trap and a foul called. Overzealous that time is Colin Page. Ooh, call on Francis? Looked like that one might have been on Page. There's been a few times today where I've disagreed with not the foul call, but who the foul is called on. This is a much better showing for these officials in this game tonight, or this afternoon. As here's Woodson, going to attack the paint. Campbell Duncan defending him, and he threw it into the hands of a few Trojans, and Blackerby goes up to take it away. Now Bennett likes to push. It's two on one. He's going to be blocked from behind, and it's going to go out of bounds. It'll stay here. Jordan Johnson gets the block. It's 34-30. to 30. Trojan ball, 2-10 left to go in the quarter. Four-point game. Wagner directing traffic. They look for Francis underneath. Going to put his back in. Back outside to Blackerby. Can't leave him open. I guess he can that time. As Campbell Duncan's there on the rebound. And foul on Duncan? What? Foul on the Trojan. Number 21, Campbell Duncan. I didn't even see if Campbell was in on that play. Looked like he was off to the side. 
But a foul nonetheless. Each team with three team fouls in the half. As they skip it across, here's Joseph. Back outside for Bradford. Bradford underneath. Now into the corner, it's Coleman. Page coming in. Now back outside. They're looking for Woodson underneath. But instead, it'll be Campbell Duncan isolated one-on-one -on -one against Bradford. And this is a matchup that I'm sure Bradford's going to try and take advantage of. Said he zips it to the corner. It's number 10, Johnson. Now back outside. It's Bradford again. They'll get it to Col Coleman. Coleman going to drive in on Francis, get caught up in the air. Now back outside, it's a three for Johnson. That's an air ball, and they're going to let it go off a of page. Good job saving it for Woodson. Coleman skipping it cross court for Bradford. Now Bradford going to kick it to Coleman. Coleman going to try for three. That's great ball movement. They can't get anything out of it. And that, oh, come on. That's a good box out for Page. Two Anderson players were boxing out one guy, and Woodson tried to go over both of them. And they call the Trojan players for it. They're going to get Page out of the game. That's now four team fouls on Anderson. Anderson's too small to be, to be bailing out Goose Creek like that on the glass. Here's Coleman up into the air. you gotta got to make him pay for jumping into the air with nowhere to go. So here's Woodson with it back outside. Now Coleman stuck against Wagner. Back to Bradford. Bradford against Dale. Under a minute to go here in the third quarter. Anderson... Was trailing by six at half. Now they're down by just four. But Bradford could erase that here. Instead, he kicks it out to Coleman. Coleman back out for Bradford. Anderson doing a good job of cutting off these driving lanes. He's going to try for three. That's a knuckleball. That's no good. Rebound Fred Dale. They'll hand it off. Get it over to Francis. Francis back to Wagner, and they get it across easily. Now into the corner. Black would be wide open. They're just going to let him take it. Short as Bennett has gone a little bit cold. He's missed his last two, but now a... Developing fast break as here's Woodson gets it in. Woodson, the left. Once again, the only guy doing it tonight for Goose Creek. He's got 21 of their 36. So back down to a six-point deficit as we are even here in the quarter. Anderson at the end of the half turned it over trying to get the last shot, but here's seven seconds left. Here's Dale. Skip it across for Jack. Jack's open from deep. He's shifting, and he's not going to get it off. Third quarter. Third quarter comes to an end. Want to thank our sponsor on tonight's broadcast, Academy Sports and Outdoors. Get ready to go back to school and back to sport at Academy. Shop in store or online at academy.com and you can find all the hottest sports gear and casual styles from Nike, Adidas, Under Armour, and more. With that, we're going to go ahead and take a quick 30 second break and we'll have the fourth quarter coming up for you right after this. Vibe Live, formerly KMAX Sports, one of the largest broadcast networks in Texas and the nation. Check us out at VibeVYPE.com. Vibe is the leader in high school sports broadcast. We've been doing it for 15 years. 3 13, back in, another reverse. Breaking tackles, dives to the end zone. Touchdown, Rangers. 16 seconds, really close up the corner. Rotates the Wilson, she fires the three. Oh my God, it went in! Cavaliers pull a hit by one. Log on to VibeVYPE.com. Coming out of the timeout, Trojans trail it by six, heading into the fourth. It's been a great opportunity for Anderson to get some run against some very quality teams here in this tournament. The games against Rockwall and Goose Creek. Uh, they played Westwood earlier this week. I mean, they've played three teams that are, that are better than everyone they'll face in district except maybe McCallum. Of course, you never know. Might have some uh, some new hot hands coming in the district slate. But last season, Anderson went undefeated, and it wouldn't surprise many if they had a similar record this year. Undefeated is always tough, as that's going to be a turnover on the first possession. They were trying to get it to Darius Woodson. So an undefeated stretch is, is going to be just as tough as it was to pull off last season. But Anderson in good position to take victory in district again this year and make another playoff run. Anderson has not missed the playoffs in, in quite a bit here. As here's Whitlow with it up top. Looking for Wagner. Mitchell still has it. Going to have to put it on the floor. Just to reset the timer. They hand it off to Blackerby. Blackerby going to pull up from three. That's too strong. Rebound underneath to Woodson. As they'll just have to save it. Bradford keeps it alive. And this should be over and back. Yes. So back-to-back -back turnovers by this Bradford-Woodson uh, duo. 
This has been a pretty forgettable game uh, by Sam Bradford's standards. Maybe should have stuck the football. Ha, ha, ha. Here's Francis underneath on the inbound. He gets it. Francis underneath. They, that's, that's their, like, go-to inbound play. Just lack, let, let Jack post up somebody, get it right under the basket. He usually is able to just finish over them. There's not usually uh, a huge shot blocker in, in the Austin area, to be honest. There just hasn't, hasn't been that guy that Anderson's had to play very much. But here's Coleman driving in. He's going to pull up. That's good. Avant for two. Avant Coleman his second make of the game. He's got four, and that's knocked out of bounds. Woodson got a hand on it. 6.47 left. Anderson looking to make it third place here at the Anderson Classic. Here's Francis. Going to pull into a three. That's no good. Left it short, just a few feet too deep. Good rebound underneath for Woodson. Now here comes Coleman. Gets Blackerby off of him, and he's going to pull up. Got it. So all of a sudden, Anderson down by nine. Here's Whitlow. Get it back to Wagner. Behind the back, crosses over. Got away with a travel there, it looks like. Back out to Whitlow, open for three. Can't connect. Rebound up high is Woodson. Francis tried to take it away, but here comes Bradford. And that's, that's a travel. Maloney picking up that uh, that back pivot foot before he can put a dribble down, and that's been a travel all night. And for good reason, it's a travel. Six minutes to go now. Anderson down by nine. Francis to the bench. Get Jack a, a quick rest before crunch time. They got Armour in with Page. And then the three starters, Whitlow, Blackerby, and Wagner. Now Whitlow with it in the corner. Back outside for Mike. 5.49 left. Mike drives in. Tries to pocket pass it to Armour, Armour, and uh, that's going to be a foul against Anderson. And th those are those are where you miss Langley because Nate has usually has better post position. He's got the better footwork, and that's no dig at any other player. That's just when you don't have your starting center, you're you're going to slip up. Langley, a key rebounder and scoring presence for Anderson that they're having to make up for tonight. Here's Bradford. Wagner pokes it away from Coleman. Coleman gets it back. He's going to get to the baseline, try and just save it. He gets it to Woodson. Woodson kicks it to the corner. Open three. Blackerby cuts it off. Now swing across. Here's Bradford. Bradford looked at the three, but he'll just stay. Five minutes left. Still a nine-point game. As Bradford likes to get it down, uh, down court. Downhill, I should say. And Bradford didn't go get his rebound. It would have been back court. So Whitlow just takes it away. Page has it. Now Colin going to try and drive in, get something at the hoop, and he does. Colin, Colin, Colin Page, just these acrobatic finishes. It's unreal. He's got five. He had five last night as well. As I think Colin Page has earned himself a big chunk of these rotation minutes. He should play a lot. As Bradford gets it, that's a nice dish off to number 22, Diamond Maloney. Back to nine, as here's Wagner working on the perimeter. Gets it back to Whitlow. Mitchell going to put it on the floor, try to drive in, kick it back outside, but he's still trapped underneath. He has Wagner left open for three. Trojans really short on a lot of these outside shot attempts as Whitlow's fouled. I think being so short on all these outside shots, I mean, they, this is their fourth game and, uh, in three days, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Additionally, they played a game on Sunday, or uh, Tuesday, not Sunday. <laughs> So they've had five games in five days, effectively. They had Wednesday off, but they played two on Thursday. So I think that Anderson really might just be a little bit worn out right now. Trailing by nine, they're short on a lot of their, their long uh, their jump shot attempts. It's a full timeout. I'm going to go ahead and take it with them. Just a 30-second break for us. We'll be right back. Vibe Live, the leader in high school sports broadcasts. Wait, hold on just a moment. It's true that Vibe Live, formerly KMAX Sports, excels at high school sports broadcasts, but did you know that Vibe Live does more than sports? Vibe Live does band recitals, academic events, 
For more information on how Vibe Live can broadcast your event, email us at Vibe, V-Y-P-E dot com. Got a little update for you for the state high school football championships. Some Austin area schools playing down at DKR today. It's Vandegrift and Westlake. And Vandegrift is losing by eight touchdowns. It's 56 to nothing at halftime. That's that's pretty incredible. Once you once you get to that that level of football, because I I was the voice of the Vista Ridge Rangers this football season as Whitlow goes one for one from the line so far. And <laughs> Vista Ridge lost to Vandegrift by like also eight touchdowns. So the transitive property, I think, don't hold me to that. I haven't been in math in a long time as Whitlow goes two for two. Uh, Vista Ridge would have lost by like 100. But here we go, still in the thick of this one. Seven point game with four minutes to go is here's Bradford, gets it inside, now back outside. Here's Samuels driving in, kicking it to the corner. Woodson juggled it, caught it. Now back out for Coleman. Coleman underneath. Now here's Bradford going to go up with it. And blocked from behind by Jack Francis, and they're going to call a foul. Jack had all ball on that one. It should go on Whitlow if it's on anybody. Yeah, that's the foul. That was on the Trojan number one, Mitchell Whitlow, his third. The block by Francis definitely was clean, but they're going to call the foul on Whitlow. So good job by Jack not to let him get it up, but foul's on Mitchell. That'll be his third. Seven-point game as Bradford heads to the line. He's only got four tonight. It'll stay there Bradford if this is the free throw. As Anderson, for the most part, uh, they can handle slashers, and they can even handle bigger guys. It's when, when guys shoot out from the perimeter. If you think of the, the player from Round Rock, you think of the player from Westwood, and even today it's been Darius Woodson that's been killing them, and it's been mostly from outside as he goes one for two from the line to make it 36 to 44. Wagner fading to the corner. He's open for three. Wagner hasn't been able to hit on these threes tonight. Now coming out and running is Bradford. He just go up with it. Jack didn't see where it was. It comes right to him. Spin move. Up ahead to Whitlow. Whitlow going to pull up for the floater. Leaves Francis open underneath, but Jack couldn't get the rebound. Good job going up with it is Brian Samuels to affect Francis' ability to get it. But now, under halfway through this fourth quarter, Anderson is going to need to step on the gas. Rifles it up to Samuels. Samuels back to Coleman. Now Coleman with it. Francis defending. He's driving in. Kicks it to the corner. It's Bradford. It's going to work on Blackerby. They've got Woodson open cross court. Still open. <laughs> Ooh. Lucky for Anderson, they missed him there. This here's Samuels going to try for three. And Bradford able to tip it to himself, but... Whitlow comes up with it. Now Anderson has numbers. It's three on one. Blackerby loses it. That'll get rid of the fast break, but here's Wagner. He's going to go up with it, try to draw the foul, and they'll call it from way deep. I think that's the right call. The official underneath the basket hasn't been calling those kind of fouls all night for Anderson. One of the officials they had last night as well. There was a lot of contact underneath. Coach Pittsford happy that the official came in from the back and called it. You had Coach Daniel running. All the way down the sideline for that. And here's Wagner goes one for one. <laughs> Been a rough day from the floor for Wagner. He's just got two points. Of course, he impacts the game in so many ways, but scoring hasn't been it tonight. Two for two, though. You can depend on him from there, usually, as they've got it down, back down to six. It's a three-point game. Anderson going to need to pitch a shutout for, for a few minutes here. Here's Bradford back across court, Coleman. Blackerby rises up. Here's Woodson. Now back out to Coleman. The double's coming. Here's Bradford. They leave him open from deep. Now swing across. Here's Coleman. Letting Duncan come up and get him. Coleman going to drive in. Splits the double. Back outside. Bradford going to take the three. That's an air ball into the hands of Blackerby. Now Anderson going to pass it ahead. Francis going to have to come back and get this basketball. As it was tipped, as Jack's going to drive it in. Dump it off to Duncan, and that's blocked from behind by Bradford. And now a foul underneath as Johnson was throwing elbows. Fouls on the Trojan, number five, Jack Francis. Foul's going to go on Francis. Because they'll be one and one from here on out. 
Black will be checking out. They'll put Page in. They've got Duncan along with Whitlow and Wagner. Jordan Johnson at the line, one and one. So that puts Jordan Johnson at the line. He only has two here tonight. Throughout the game, Avant Coleman had a five-point burst in this uh, fourth quarter to give him seven. Free throw's good. Two for two. So that gives Johnson four. Anderson going to burn uh, another timeout. That'll give them one left. They trail by eight. Going to go ahead and take a break with them. It is a full timeout. We'll be right back with more Trojan basketball on Vibe Live. Vibe Live, the leader in high school sports broadcast. Wait, hold on just a moment. It's true that Vibe Live, formerly KMAX Sports, excels at high school sports broadcasts. But did you know that Vibe Live does more than sports? Vibe Live does band recitals, academic events. For more information on how Vibe Live can broadcast your event, email us at vipevype.com. Back out of the timeout. Anderson trailing by eight on what's been, just hasn't been their day. It's been one of those games. It's been a very weird one. Anderson just looks tired, looks out of sorts. Haven't been able to hit on very many threes, uh, really any outside shots, except for Francis at one in the beginning of the game. And then Blackerby has a few of his own here. Otherwise, not much doing from deep as Anderson misses some of their snipers from last year, guys like Jaden Austin or Nick Harris. Especially with Langley out, you miss a guy like Nick Harris who, who provided so much size and was the reason that you could bring Langley off the bench last season. Because Harris... Had a lot of that rebounding ability as well. But Anderson and these players will round into form and develop a new team identity as the year moves along. As Wagner is going to pull up for three. This one well short as well. See what I mean? They look really tired. None of their shots are, 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 are uh, they're all short. They're all hitting off the front of the rim. So here's Woodson. They get it to Bradford. Now into the corner. Lob up, and that one hit off the rim, but falling right to Johnson, who gets a layup. So some lucky bounces here for Goose Creek. Puts him up 10. Just two minutes to go. Whitlow driving in. Whitlow going to kick to the corner for Page. Page looked at a three and said he'll put it on the floor. It's going to go right up with it. Misses. Francis gets the rebound. He goes up. He's hammered. He misses the shot. It's passed ahead. And knocked away by Wagner. They were trying to lob it up for Bradford. Coleman had it. But good job by Mike disrupting the play. 90 seconds. They still trail by 10. So it looks like Goose Creek going to come out on top in this one. Anderson operating a little bit short-handed here. Still putting up a good fight in both of these games. As their game against Westlake next week is going to be a real tough one. That'll be the next time we have a, a broadcast for you. It'll be right here in this gym, and then they'll have a, a, a nice long layoff. Now this is the worst part of the sport is this last couple minutes of just free throws and fouls are going to take us a, a good long while to get through. Come on. We good? We good? It'll be one to one Thank you. Bradford with five. He makes the first. He's one for two from the line. That'll make it two for three. And, yeah, you can tell Anderson only scoring 38 points in this one. They just are very sluggish and out of sorts here. There's no one able to really hit a deep shot by Anderson. As they get it back to Francis, he's going to drive in. Get caught up in the air, and no foul call. He had a defender on his back. Blackerby going to step back. That's no good. As it's just been a, it's been one of those games for Anderson, and that's that's a foul. Okay. Foul transition. Get me on the Trojan. 
as Francis literally had a Goose Creek player jump up into the air and come down onto his back, go back and the they line. had no foul. He's gonna shoot one and one. Just because it happens away from the ball doesn't mean it's not a foul. So here's Coleman to the line. He's got seven. That'll make it eight. Oh, no, he misses. Still, Anderson's still down by 12, and now they'll have a foul called against Samuels. Now another foul in transition. going to be on the Patriots, number 12. Still Ryan one to give for Goose Creek. Anderson down by 12. Third at the 16th foul. He's trying to damage control and make it look like a closer game than this will indicate. I think it has been a closer game than the final score will probably indicate, but that's what happens when you get into foul mode at the end of games. Let's say Anderson lost it by about six to eight points in reality. As Francis is going to try from way deep, as Page is going to go and try and get this, and he does, but he's out of bounds. Still 45 seconds. Anderson going to try and get the ball back. They get it ahead to Coleman. Coleman running forward. They get it underneath to Johnson. Johnson gets a layup. Two more for Johnson. So here comes Page. He's going to pull up from the free throw line. That's no good off the glass. Rebound batted around and into the hands of the Patriots. And Anderson going to keep fouling here. Still 25 seconds. Now they're down 14. Going to make it look a whole lot worse than it actually was. That's the 10th team foul. We're going to shoot two for the rest of the game for the Patriots. Going to the line, number 12, Brian Samuel. So Samuels will head to the line, shooting two. Misses the first. Francis, after he misses both, Jack splits the defender. He's going to get all the way to the basket, lays it up and in. Jack. So Jack will be moved into double figures with that layup. We'll certainly take that to pad the stats a little bit. Now here comes Goose Creek, and it looks like Anderson's just going to let it go with 10 seconds left. So the Trojans come up just short in this one. Couldn't get, uh, weren't able to get it going from outside. Just too much fatigue for this Trojan team. Not That's your ball game. Uh, again, uh, Goose Creek, I mean, faced the same circumstances, so absolutely no uh, no shame to them. They uh, they were able to keep the energy up and keep the energy going into that last game in a way that Anderson was not. Uh, they just looked tired from the outset. A lot of shots falling short. A lot of guys missing open looks that ordinarily they're known to make Mike Wagner. Um, Don't forget about the grapple. The uh, more turnovers than you're used to seeing from Wagner, his pocket pass game was just a little bit off where usually he, he, he's got those right on the money. So Anderson finishes fourth this season in the Anderson Classic. They lose the gold bracket, but no shame in that, as that is the best one that you could be in here. They go 2-0 and to start it, and then they go 0-2 uh, to finish. And with that, we'll have the Westlake game for you in just a minute. Nate Langley should be held out of that one as well, so this will be a tough contest against that Chaps team who always comes to play, is always one of the top teams in the state. So with that, going to go ahead and take a, uh, we're going to go ahead and sign off for Anderson, Bennett Blackerby, Team High at 12, this Francis had 11, and Darius Woodson goal. for the Goose Creek Brian. Memorial Patriots. He had 21. So I'd like to thank you for tuning in to all of our broadcasts this week. Anderson finishes fourth. They do make the gold bracket, but that's as far as they are able to get. We are going to go ahead and sign off. We'll be back with you on Tuesday. Thanks for tuning in. Hope you all have a great rest of your weekend. Good night, everybody.